Hey guys, come on downstairs. We're playing a little Microsoft Flight Simulator today. It's Career Mode Las Vegas. And uh, it won't always be Career Mode Las Vegas. We're going to change areas from one to another. But today, we are heading to Mexico. Yeah, south of the border. This is our most ambitious job yet. We're going to head down to Searchlight, Arizona. We'll land and fuel up there. Then we'll head to Avi Suquila in Parker, Arizona, and we'll fuel up there. And then we'll go around this VOR to Desert Center Airport, where we will fuel up once again. And from there, I think we make it all the way down to Mexicali. There's the IPL VOR, which is just at the border. And then we cross it into Mexicali. All right, there's a reason why we are stopping four times for fuel, okay? I weigh 226 pounds. Our passenger, on the other hand, weighs 300 plus pounds. I don't know if I settled on 380. Did I settle on 380? I think I might have changed it and gone a little bit lighter. Yeah. 330. So she weighs 330 pounds. And that puts us overweight. So we're going to cut back on the fuel. So we can't have as much fuel on board. And that's that's going to be an issue for us. So like, we've got this 330 pound lady on board with us, okay? And if we want to be under our max takeoff weight, we can only carry like five gallons of fuel. That's nuts. <laughs> okay, well... I don't know how realistic this is, but we're going to try it. We're going to do it. So we got just over five gallons of fuel on board. Uh, let's set our wear and tear to five. And uh, it's December 27th, 8.30 a.m. in North Las Vegas. We are getting ready for our most ambitious job yet. Fly a woman to Mexico for gastric bypass surgery. So even with the payment for this flight and the surgery, it was still cheaper than having it done in the United States. Imagine that. Job number 13, the fat lady sings. We're getting a little bit creative here, I guess. Taking some liberties. So we don't have a lot of fuel. We're going to be stopping at several airports. This job is going to be a three-part job or a three-part, three-episode job. This first episode, we're just going to get part of the way. And in the second episode, we'll get a little further. And in the third episode, we'll finally reach our destination of Mexicali. So this is, this job is a beast. Okay. All right. We should have had the beacon on. I don't know why I keep forgetting to turn the beacon on, on this plane. I don't, I think I got to a point where I remembered after messing it up so many times and not having the beacon on when I started the uh, propeller. Let's set up our initial navigation radios here. Uh, 116.9 for the first one and 114.4 uh, for the second one. And we'll set up the t our two standbys as well for our next. So we're going to have four VORs set up in our navigation to begin with. Our first heading will be uh, 147, which is going to be to the southeast. All right. We'll back our mixture off a little bit while we are sitting here on the ramp. I see, and I don't know if it needs to be backed off that far, but. Okay, we're going to set the altimeter at 
contact read back hold short instructions. Advice controller on initial contact, you have Oscar. North Las Vegas ground Cessna Bravo Golf Tree request taxi for west departure with Papa. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree taxi to and hold short of runway tree zero left by a taxiway Charlie Bravo Kilo. Contact tower on 119er decimal 15 when ready. Taxi 2 and hold short runway tree 0 left using taxiway Charlie Bravo Kilo Cessna Bravo Golf Tree. We'll be taking off runway 30 left once again. And uh, I believe. I can't remember where we said which way we would depart. I, I want to say we're going to depart to the west and start heading south. But. Our initial uh, heading is southeast, so maybe we depart to the east and head down that way. But if I if I think about this, I, I want to say our first waypoint is actually not a VOR. It's actually just a DME. Unless I changed it. I think it was the, the GOG DME which doesn't help us much because we don't have DME equipment on this plane, but I do know the vicinity of where it is, so we could kind of head that way. And I think if we depart to the west, that's going to be where we're headed. If we depart to the east, then I must have changed from the GOG DME to something more uh, feasible for this plane to track, which maybe was the BLD VOR. I can't remember. We kind of went through that a little bit too fast for me. But it'll be apparent which way we're going um, once we once we depart from the runway heading. All right, we are at runway three zero left. We don't need the entire runway to take off, so we'll just enter from this spot. Uh, we need to do our run up. We need to test the magnetos, magneto uh, cutoff test. Not sure how much of it I cut out or left in, but it looks like we're going to do the run up here, get up to about 1750 RPMs for a little bit. Yeah, it's flight simulator. It's never going to not, like, we're never going to do the run up and have it not be okay <laughs> but it's still fun to do I remember a lot of a lot of times in some of my uncle's smaller planes where uh, we get out near the runway and, and do the North run up Las it's kind of fun Tower, Cessna, Bravo, Golf Tree, at runway tree zero left ready for departure departure to the west Cessna, Bravo, Golf Tree, altimeter tree zero decimal two eight wind two nine or nine at tree departure to the west approved okay so we are departing to the west we are departing to the west. So I believe we are headed to the GOG DME, and then from there, our direction will be southeast towards uh, Searchlight, the Searchlight area, which is going to be our first landing spot. Uh, guys, you're going to, seriously, you're going to want to watch these three episodes because this trip, this trip got pretty wild. Uh, it was definitely not the smooth sailing that like the last seven jobs have been, seven or eight jobs have been. Uh, for one thing, we have a 330 pound lady sitting next to us. And it was very apparent. Like A, the plane is wanting to pull to the right here on takeoff. Right, 55, 60 knots, rotate, and you can see just right off of takeoff, our plane wants wants to dip to the right a little bit. So, like flying this plane, you could very much, like you could very much sense the weight on that right side of the plane.
So the idea for this job, like, I'm not trying to be like. North Las Vegas Tower, Cessna Bravo Golf Tree, continue for west departure. All right, so we're gonna turn here to the west. Try to gain some altitude. So I'm not trying to be like rude or a jerk with this job or anything like that, um, because. To be honest, like I, I know a few people that literally have gone to Mexico for this gastric bypass surgery, um, and it it is cheaper, but man, it's like if I was in their shoes, which I'm not, but if I was, like that, I, that just seems really, really not safe like it seems really risky to go to mexico to have gastric bypass surgery done for one thing it's a pretty dangerous surgery like it, it's not i mean it's a dangerous surgery performed in the u.s like like it, it's not like it's not like um it's like a like a hernia surgery in the u.s or something that you're taking a huge risk going to like a third world country like ghana or something and having it done there like it's it's not like that like a hernia surgery in the u.s is nothing not really not risky at all for the most part there's some complications sure i think um but like it's way riskier to do that type of surgery in like a third world world country and i'm not calling mexico a third world country this is the point i'm trying to make is that it's not like a, a super safe surgery that you're going to a really unsafe place to do it like it's a pretty risky surgery even in a, a you know a safer place to do it like it's not it just doesn't seem like a, a surgery that you mess around with trying to do it cheaply. You know what I mean? Like, that's just that's just me. And granted, it, you know, it's not healthy and it's not safe to be that overweight either. So, you know, that's risky too. And I guess maybe if you do a... If you do an honest analysis of it, maybe it... Maybe it is riskier to, if you can't, if you literally just can't afford it and don't, maybe don't have the insurance to help cover it. Cessna Bravo Golf Tree is type Cessna 152 tree miles southwest of North Las Vegas, 4,900 feet. Request like, clearance to transition Bravo airspace. I like doing the ATC when I'm flying, but I'm not going to lie. When I'm doing the commentary, when I'm doing the commentary, the ATC is a pain in the butt. Like, I'm in the middle of trying to make a point and the ATC comes up and talks over me. It's so frustrating, but... But it is what it is. So we'll get that formality out of the way. There's a look at downtown Las Vegas. As we're heading off to the west um, so back to what I was saying like maybe if you do an honest risk analysis of this it's a nice look at uh, Allegiant Stadium where the Las Vegas Raiders play as well as the T-Mobile Arena right there where the uh, Las Vegas Golden Knights play as well as a nice shot at the Luxor Hotel the pyramid one So very cool shot of Vegas right there. Um, anyway, my ADHD has kicked in. Back to uh, what I was talking about. So if we do a, a, a real honest analysis, maybe it is riskier to stay in the US, not be able to afford the surgery and be unhealthy and overweight. And like, 
and I and I don't just mean a little bit overweight. Like I mean like you know the people that qualify for this uh, surgery, they're making some massive life changes. Like, and the reason they're doing it is so that they can have longevity in their life. Like I, like I wouldn't, I would never like make fun of somebody that's doing the surgery because I respect them, right? Because they're making a huge, like I know some people that have done it and it's not easy and it's not an easy decision because it is a risky surgery and it requires a lot of dedication and a lot of real desire to change. Like you've got to, like in order for this surgery to work, like you have to change your diet and your eating habits, a lot, you know, like you have to make some massive life changes and commit to being healthy. Um, otherwise, you can end up back where you were before. So I, I do have known a couple of people that have gone to Mexico to do this surgery. And I look at them in kind of amazement. Like, I can't, I can't believe you dared to go do that and not do it in the US even though it's more expensive but like I mean money doesn't grow on trees I get that okay like not everybody has great insurance that's going to pay for something like that especially if, if you know you're doing you know you're electing to do it and you know there might be some insurances that people have that just won't cover it like they look at it like plastic surgery or something like it's cosmetic or something like that i don't know you never know what insurance companies are going to try to do to get off the hook for helping somebody pay for something like that you just never know depending on the insurance company so so i can see why somebody would go to mexico to do this i it kind of floors me that they would do it but i'm not in their shoes so so the basis of this job is that we're taking a lady down there to get this uh, very risky surgery done. Uh, this job is not, com you know, it's not like I didn't just make this up to be funny or to like people actually do this. Like this is people actually literally, yeah, they're probably not going to hire a pilot to fly him down there, but. But like this is this job this could possibly actually happen like even paying the exorbitant prices that we charge in this series uh it might be cheaper to pay somebody to fly them to mexico in this fashion to get the surgery done than to pay for it in america like it, it's the sad reality but it it's not unrealistic okay so we've made it to the the GOG uh, DME a while ago, and we've changed direction, and we're heading south now. Um, we actually have made it to our first VOR even, and we're heading uh, south from that VOR. So we, we did all of that while I was talking about the surgery. So... And uh, we look down, we're starting to get pretty low on fuel. So we are starting to need to get to Searchlight, Arizona, because we need to refuel already. Already. Well, we've been gone for 20 minutes. And we're already coming upon Searchlight. So we're starting to descend. You can see uh, we have our flaps down a little bit. We're starting to uh, try to control our speed as we come into Searchlight. So make our descent into searchlight our first fuel stop now this landing in searchlight like this this may be up to this point in this series this is the roughest most turbulent landing I think I have ever done definitely in this series but it might be as far as general uh, GA aircraft go I don't I don't think I have ever had a more turbulent or uh, just bumpy approach like this gets wild when we get turned around we're gonna be landing heading to the north 
And right now we're heading south, so we're going to flip around. Um, One Lima tree traffic Cessna Bravo Golf Tree is on downwind runway tree four. Yeah, so we're basically on our downwind right here. We're entering the traffic pattern on downwind. I think we're a little bit high. So we need to drop some altitude. There's the runway over there on the left. So we're going to circle around this little hill and uh, turn onto our base leg just after we get to this hill, I think. Like, things seem pretty smooth right now. Lima tree traffic Cessna Bravo Golf Tree is on base runway tree four. Okay, so we're going to turn on to base here. Things pre seem pretty smooth right here, but when we when we turn on to final, oh my gosh, man, we just start. Like, either it it's, gets really windy or what. There's some unstable air or something because we just start really bouncing. Like, it's a really rough, rough approach into Searchlight, Arizona. But we're almost out of fuel and... Let's just say I learned some lessons on this job. Like, this job just, it didn't go smoothly, okay? Like, we. Tree traffic Cessna Bravo Golf Tree is on final runway tree four to land. All right, we're going to turn on to final here. We really challenged ourselves in this job. Like, it, it's a very long ways to go. We've got a, you know, a 300 and, what did we put her at? 330 pound lady. We can't carry as much fuel as we want. We're going to have to stop a lot. We might, we honestly sh shouldn't be pushing our fuel situation like we are. And honestly, it may be safer to take, to try to take off overweight. I don't really know, but th there's some decisions we're going to have to make here. All right. Starting to drop some altitude over this freeway. Come back into searchlight. Doesn't seem too bumpy yet. Maybe it was just in my imagination, like when I was landing. It, see, it did seem like a pretty stiff headwind. Uh, I mean, we're bu we're bouncing a little bit, and maybe I'm just fighting it more than you can tell on the video. I don't know. I just remember when I was landing, I was like, my goodness, this is I'm having a hard. There we go. Now see, now we're starting to get some downdrafts or some you know starting to lose some lift we're at 50 knots we probably should be at around 60 we need to try to speed up here there we yeah we're really we're starting to really hit some turbulence here and i'm really having to fight like you can see in the lower side of the cockpit how much i'm fighting with the yoke look at this my yoke the yoke is just going back and forth and left and right and yeah this was this was pretty uh this was a white knuckle landing because i the plane just kept dipping on me like and we're near stall speed like we should have more speed but the wind is really strong headwind like my goodness we're still hitting bumps right here like the turbulence and finally we get to here and it starts to smooth it out a little bit but we still still are floating a little bit my goodness but man that was butter smooth touchdown but man that was a fight holy crap i when i landed that i remember breathing a huge sigh of relief because the the wind or the whatever it was the turbulence it was having its way with this little Cessna, man. And I was fighting it like crazy. Trying to stay lined up with the runway. But we got it down. And uh, here's our first fuel stop. Again, you're going to want to stay with us through uh, all of these three episodes. Because it gets pretty crazy. Stick with us, why don't you? Till we get all the way to Mexico, man. Just do the whole flight with us. I mean... Put it on while you're doing something else. I, I don't expect you to be glued to this series for every second of it. It's not that intense. It's not like some of it's downright boring. I understand that, but that's that's flying. It's long moment, long stretches of boredom interrupted by moments of sheer terror. I understand that. That's flying. But if you're going to get to those moments of sheer terror, just hang with us, man. Be doing something. Maybe just listen to me off in the background and... Uh, I'll let you know when 
when uh, shit's about to hit the fan, I'll let you know and you can tune back in. But have it going, you know? Like, stick with us through this. It, this is It's going to be a fun series. What, once we start making enough money to start buying new planes and having different options to fly different planes to different places. So we had a pretty stiff headwind. You could see the windsock was blowing pretty strong. Uh, cool little airport. I love where the tower is back in those trees. That's nice. That's cool. All right, fun little airport. We're going to stop here. We're going to fuel up. And then we're going to continue on our way. Again, we're only going to be able to put in about five gallons of fuel. And as far as recording the fuel goes, we don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, I kept track of it pretty good. We're not going to keep track of it as we go throughout the video, I don't think. Maybe we do. I can't remember. But trust me, I, I logged it all the way through so that when we do finally get to Mexico, we can. So, uh, well, I guess we, we burned 3.58 gallons here. So maybe I do break it down at every stop. I can't remember exactly what I did. So 3.58 gallons to this point. And we're going to put in 2.73 gallons in each tank. One so we're... Tree traffic, Cessna, Bravo, Golf Tree, taking off runway tree four south departure. So we're a little bit over five gallons total. That's not going to get us very far. Okay, so we're going to taxi back to takeoff. I can't remember if I show you this whole taxi. I might have. Like, I didn't abbreviate this job really much at all. So we're getting the long version of this trip to Mexico, which is cool, which is good. But yeah, there's a pretty stiff headwind. We've got to go all the way down uh, to runway 34 and turn around here. There isn't much of a taxiway at this airport. You just basically go down the middle of the runway and flip around. But it's also not a busy airport, so nobody's waiting for us to do this. we got all the time in the world. All right, let's skip ahead. We are down near the end of the runway. Some nice-looking uh, Arizona foliage around. We're not quite down into the cactus, the cacti yet, I don't think. Maybe uh, not the saguaras anyway. There's probably some uh, cactus on the ground, prickly pears and whatnot. But we're not quite down in the uh, in the saguaras yet. We're not that far down into Arizona. And in fact, we go down along the uh, Arizona. Like, we get down below Nevada, and we get along the uh, Arizona-California border, actually, before we turn and head into California and then into Mexico. So, our next leg is supposed to get us down to Parker, Arizona. But, spoiler alert, we run into some issues before we get there. So you're going to want to stay tuned for this leg for sure. Because before before we reach Parker, Arizona, there's there's some uh, slight complications of this flight. Okay. Let's get ourselves more in the middle of the runway. We're taking our sweet time to take off here. I don't know why. But uh, here we go. Maybe a little bit worried about the turbulence. Having to fight it again. Because I think, just like the landing, I think this takeoff was a little bit rough. So here we go. We begin our second takeoff roll of this trip to Mexico. We got a long ways to go still, guys. We did not get very far. We fueled up to five more gallons, so we're just under our takeoff weight, max takeoff weight. Uh, 55 knots rotate. And uh, we're already getting a little bit of bouncing, a, a little bit of turbulence. T terrain, pull up. Terrain, pull up. 
and we're, we're into that headwind so we're having a hard time maintaining the 65 knot optimal climb rate not to mention uh, the terrain ahead of us is gaining in altitude so we're basically taking off into a hillside and uh, we're gonna have to flip flip around here and start heading south back on uh, our track towards Mexico because right now we're heading back to Las Vegas so it looks like we're gonna turn to our right there's less terrain out that way to deal with it's a little bit flatter and I think once we turn and get out of the headwind, it starts to be a little bit less turbulent. So this is leg one or uh, part one of job number thirteen. We're in our second leg of this flight to Mexico, second of. Uh, what was initially planned to be four legs but stick around and see what kind of complications and issues we run into we've compromised our fuel situation in order to fly this lady she's willing to pay a lot so we're uh, she's she's probably uh, overweight for this plane to be honest you probably there's probably a weight limit on the plane that she probably exceeds but we are uh, looking overlooking that because she's got cash right and we need the money so she's 330 pounds and uh, I'm 226 myself so we've between the two of us we got 550 pounds of weight in this cockpit which is excessive to say the least I would think so man my kids are being so good they're being so good and quiet this is the second video I've done this morning actually it's the third video I've done this morning so they've been super quiet for like well over an hour they're doing really good they're they're gonna get a frosty or something that's the that's the goal that's why they're being quiet so we can go get lunch and get a frosty right guys yeah okay I'm still working on my video so let's be quiet for a little bit you want to say hi to everybody yeah. say hi <laughs> they're cute all right We're heading back down south now. We've flipped around. And uh, we're heading away from Searchlight, Arizona. We uh, stay on this western edge of Arizona as we skip ahead a little ways, heading towards Parker, Arizona. Again, the desert is fantastic to fly over. I say it every single episode. The... Uh, amount of different elevations the shadows created by all of the uh, little canyons and runoffs and gulches and gullies and all of that is very very fantastic very cool very 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 cool uh, lighting effects in the desert on the ground very nice that being said uh, we're not going to be in the desert for this whole series in fact we're not even going to be in the US for this whole series we're going to we're eventually going to uh, be in different parts of the world that's the goal but the goal is also like I want to be able to fly when we like when we leave Las Vegas I want to fly to our next place our next job site our next job city and uh, in a little Cessna I don't want to fly I'm not gonna fly to Brazil okay so it's gonna be somewhere fairly close to the Las Vegas area fairly close and to be honest I may have even pushed it a little bit and went a little bit too far 
further than I would have liked away from Vegas. So it looks pretty barren down there. Not a place you really want to be uh, getting into a low fuel situation in, I wouldn't think. And I mean, I tried to calculate the fuel, but I mean, honestly, five gallons isn't very much. And trying to optimize how far we get so we don't have to stop like 16 times. If uh, I miscalculated or if we get in any type of headwind or we don't stay on, on track very well, yeah, we're gonna have some issues. So, and this, I think this leg, the second leg, was actually the one that we're pushing it the most, trying to get to Parker, Arizona. I think it was the most mileage in between legs of all the legs. So we really need, kind of need to have some luck on our side here. That maybe we get a, a little bit of a tailwind or something. If the wind is blowing the way it was in searchlight from north to south, that's a really good sign. So. I don't know what the wind is doing up here at this altitude, but if it's doing what it was doing down near the ground, then uh, it's blowing in the right direction. Again, this is part one of a three-part job, job number 13. We're really challenging ourselves here. Not only are we going further away from our North Las Vegas home base than we've ever gone, we're also really pushing it with our weight restrictions. And it's really obvious as I flew this that the right side of our plane, the passenger side of our plane, was weighed down. Again, I weigh about 226, and our passenger weighs 330. So she weighs a good 100 pounds more than me over on that right side. So we don't have a super balanced plane right now. Okay, so we're starting to get, we're within range of uh, P20, which is the uh, airport in Parker. So the wind looks calm. And uh, everything looks good so far for our approach into Parker, Arizona. Oh my gosh. But we are 53 miles northwest still. That seems like way more miles than I expected from the, the flight plan, from the plan on the map. Holy cow. I think hopefully we've got a little bit of a tailwind but that's a lot of mileage to go uh, holy crap dude we're almost we're uh, getting low on fuel too I thought we were a lot closer than 53 miles we may be better start looking for a different airport to land at here we might have to make this a five leg trip instead of a four leg trip because I don't think I don't think we're making it 53 miles on the fuel that we have left. So we do not have much fuel left. We don't have a digital gauge that tells us exactly how much fuel we have left, like some planes do. But our needle is getting fairly low down there, and I don't know where the where 
where the cutoff is. I've never pushed it like this before, so so we'll see. Uh, we probably at this point should be looking for different airports, but I don't think I had it in my mind to yet. Hindsight is, is 2020. I definitely at this point should have been looking for airports and you can probably guess what's about to happen because I uh, am not looking for a closer airport to land at. I uh, am being stubborn. I've got my head down and trying to plow through to Parker, Arizona. And uh, maybe I didn't notice how low I was on fuel, but I can see it right now that our fuel situation is not looking very good. We are at 6,800 feet. Maybe it burned more fuel to climb out of searchlight than I anticipated. I don't know, there could be a lot of factors and maybe I just flat out miscalculated the length of this leg from searchlight to Parker. We've maybe we've maybe gone seven miles since we were 53 miles away from, and we're out of gas. Oh boy! Really should have seen that coming. I really should have, but I was clueless, guys. I was absolutely clueless. I should have been looking for airports, and now I panic and decide we need to look for airports. So this Needles Airport is off to our left and that's where we're going to try to make it we're going to try to uh, it, it's off to the left you can see the darker area it's still a ways away I don't know if we're going to make it over there but uh, we have no fuel left We are out of fuel, and to make matters worse, we have 556 pounds of weight in the cockpit between the two occupants, myself and this lady that we're taking to Mexico. So we're in trouble. All right, so Needles is over there, I believe, by that lake. Um, really need, I mean, so I love that I, I'm just like calmly checking their weather situation at Needles because it's going to be an airport where the ATC doesn't talk back to me at all, so I can't really get on and be like, Kilo Echo Echo uh, Delta traffic Cessna Bravo Gulf having a situation out here. Okay, 11 miles. Can we... Can we uh, make it 11 miles? Uh, we're down to 60 knots. We got to... I mean, the, the issue we have here is we're going to have to keep trading altitude for speed. Um, and I don't know what the, the optimal speed is to uh, maximize how far we can get. But I don't. I know one thing is for sure. I don't really want to be pushing. Uh, I really don't want to be pushing the stall speed. But at the same time, I don't want to be losing tons of altitude too fast because we got 11 miles to try to get to this airport. Otherwise, we're either going to crash. We're either going to crash or uh, have to land in the desert. All right, we move ahead just a little bit, and uh, we are we're going down about 500 feet per minute. We're at 80 knots. We're getting a little bit closer out there, but it still looks like it's a ways away, and I don't know that we have enough altitude to get out there, so we may have to start looking for a place to ditch this thing and put it down because um, I don't think we're making it out to that lake area of needles out there north of that lake 
uh, get our flaps fully extended which actually slows us down it may not have been the best idea but I thought maybe maybe uh, we could get a little bit further without losing as much altitude I don't know I was probably off on that but I don't think either way we're making it to needles because it's yeah and and that's that that's that's the last that's it guys that's that's our fuel right there it's gone in fact our engine just completely shut off we we had enough that the propeller was still going we didn't have a lot of uh didn't have a lot of, th of uh, thrust or whatever but now we just don't have anything all right guys time to start looking for a place to ditch this thing let's go over the consequences of this as we're messing with stall speed here got to let the nose down a little bit uh if we crash this thing it's going to cost us five thousand dollars right if we manage to land this off the runway it's going to cost us twenty five hundred dollars so that's the that's the situation we're facing right now those are the two options that we have because landing on a runway is not an option right now so obviously we want to be able to put this thing down without crashing it if we can do that it'll save us twenty five hundred dollars if we do crash it it's going to be five thousand dollars all right we're going down pretty fast now we've got a lot of weight remember we got 500 pounds in this cockpit uh, we're going down about 700 feet per minute I'd like to land at about 200 feet per minute but we're gonna hit a little bit harder hold on oh man okay we're trying to avoid the bushes And it looks like we're going to be able to come to a stop without hitting anything. And the land was fairly flat, thank goodness. Whew, all right. <laughs> that wasn't where we wanted to end up. But we're somewhere out here in the uh, California desert. We've got 0.75 gallons in each tank. And apparently that's not enough to keep the engine going. And so that's where we're going to leave off part one of this trip to Mexico. Things not going smoothly. We've run out of gas. We're somewhere out in the desert and we're going to need to have somebody tow us in to the nearest airport. It's Mama's Basement, Career Mode Las Vegas, a Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs>